Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Why, hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. It is my show, and you are welcome to be a part of it by calling 877 973 7425. We may even be a little loose on the phone calls today. and up your odds of getting past the call screener if you're not crazy. <laughs> I have to, you'd be surprised. Do you know when I started in radio, started nine to midnight, this was around the time people were talking about the Obama phones. And I wasn't sure the Obama phone was real. And after 10 p.m., we would get the craziest phone calls. And finally, someone explained to me that yes, the Obama phone really was real. Uh, poor people subsidized uh, cell phone service. And the minutes don't count after 10 p.m. And they would call in drunk. Good Lord. I had one woman call in one night and and say she couldn't believe that I opposed the death or supported the death penalty because the Ten Commandments say thou shalt not kill. And I asked her she had her Bible and she did. And I made her flip the next page and it was made her start reading about it. In the, in the very next page, if your kids disrespect the parents, kill them. Somebody kill somebody, kill them. Somebody does this, kill them. Somebody does that, stone them to death. On and on. It's like, so what are you saying? Woman, well, she hung up on me. <laughs> All right. The the phone number again, 877-973-7425. I, I have to begin again with the Disney stuff. Just, just, and I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but we, there's a point to be had here. A point to be made. I, in all candor and honesty, I am a little bit appalled by conservatives, by Republicans, by the right, punishing a company, uh, taking away a, a tax district. They should have never given it. I, I, well, yeah, they actually should have in the 50s, 60s. Uh, Disney wanted to experiment. They shouldn't have kept it as long as they have, but uh, taking it away, punishing it for exercising its First Amendment rights at the same time, and I, these go together at the same time. If the left is going to do this stuff, you can't expect the right to sit on its hands and surrender. Disney should have never spoken out about the legislation in Florida. They were pressured by their woke employees, and there will be consequences if they're going to listen to their woke employees. Uh, my friend David French, and David is a friend of mine. I will defend David French. We don't always agree. He's a wonderful human being. His whole family is. He and I uh, agree and disagree on this issue. I agree with him that I don't think Republicans should be targeting companies because the companies dare to stake out a position. At the same time, I realize companies are starting to do this overwhelmingly for the left. They're coming for the right, and uh, I, I, I think it behooves people on the right uh, to come up with ideas. And thus far, the best idea is to stick it to them the way they've done it to us. And, and I can't, without a competing idea, I can't really blame them for doing that. I mean, you, you're going to say... Sit on your hands and do nothing. Let Disney spend campaign money trying to oppose, because that's what they were going to do. The woke said Disney were going to make them do it. Come after the Republicans. I mean, you're going to fight. It is human nature to fight back at times like this and, and find a constructive way to do it. Uh, frankly, I think that hopefully this will be the one time where Disney screwed up. They should have never done it. You know, Bob Chapik, the CEO there, is being blamed for a lot of this. Chapik's response, actually, was to do nothing. Chapik's response was, this is for the people of Florida, not for us. He was bullied into it by the wokes at Disney that Bob Iger had put in place. Bob Iger, the former president of Disney, was a, a, a Hollywood royalty hobnob with everybody, very progressive, wants to run for president. He came out, put Chapik in a difficult position by speaking out against the law. Chapik's hand was forced. He had to do it, and now the company's been hurt. Maybe future companies will learn from what happened in Florida. Stop trying to involve yourself in this. Frankly, it was overwhelmingly California employees of Disney anyway. Now, I bring all this up because I got to segue into something directly related to it uh, on, on Disney's next move. 
when I started on television back in 2009, I was rather intimidated, to be frank with you. I grew up in Dubai, moved back to the States when I was 15, went to school in very rural Louisiana, graduated at the top of my class, and then moved to Macon, Georgia to go to a university people outside of Georgia never heard of until they beat Duke in the final four or in the NCAA uh, March Madness a couple of years ago by a fluke. Mercer University is my alma mater. Met my wife there. It was a good school and I got a good education, but it wasn't Ivy League. It wasn't Harvard. It wasn't Yale. It wasn't Columbia. It wasn't even Duke. I got a scholarship, believe it or not, to go to Duke. I wound up going to Mercer because the people were a whole lot nicer and I was more comfortable at a smaller school. It wasn't Georgetown. It wasn't the University of Chicago. It wasn't one of the really big schools. It wasn't even LSU or, or the University of Georgia. It was a small school. And I went in having a bit of an inferiority complex, if I'm honest. Because here I was on television with people, they had literally run presidential campaigns. I'm on TV with James Carville and Paul Begala. Two very nice people, by the way, even if I disagree with them. But I, I'm on television with people who ran presidential campaigns. I'm on television with people who had degrees, PhDs from the Ivy League. And, and here I am, th this kid, I mean, at the time, 30 years old, from middle Georgia. None of them wanted me there. It was very clear none of them wanted me there. I was the, 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 the bomb thrower from redstate.com who had uh, said inappropriate things about a Supreme Court justice on Twitter. That's all they knew. David Gergen, for God's sakes, had advised multiple presidents and taught at Georgetown University. And, and here I come in. And guess what? It turns out I knew as much as or more than a lot of the Ivy Leaguers. I wound up getting along very well with people like Begala and Donna Brazil, Alex Castellanos, Mary Madeline, James Carville, even David Gergen, in large part because they, they realized I actually knew stuff. I actually was educated. I actually wasn't just the bomb thrower they saw on social media or, or the, the flamethrower from redstate.com. I had run campaigns. I was a lawyer. I had run, I, I knew the law. I knew how to run a campaign. I knew how to design a mail piece. I knew political strategy. I knew what I was talking about. And I, I was always uh, flummoxed by some of the people you see on TV and not them that they, they actually know what they're talking about. But there are others who uh, daddy was a campaign donor, so they got to lick stamps in the back office and say they, they ran a pro political campaign, and suddenly they're the expert. You get these people on television, Fox and CNN, in the same situation. People who say they're a campaign strategist or campaign expert or, or some expertise, and they don't. They don't know anything. I was shocked by how dumb some of these people were, and overwhelmingly, it was people with better connections than me. And, and that always seems, by and large, to be the case in these situations. It's people who have their, their mommy and daddy know somebody or they are themselves are friends with someone who opens the door. Nobody opened the door for me. Honestly, to some degree, I, I, I feel a little frustrated with, with radio and, and growth in radio uh, that, that I'm, I'm kind of doing it myself. I fell into it by accident. And then I, I, I see some people who will remain nameless who um, their star rises suddenly because the, somebody knew somebody that they, they had connections and friendships and it, 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 it can be perturbing, I admit. You just have to tell yourself, God's got you where you are for a reason. But I was struck over and over and over again by how often they would put me on television against someone and I'd be like, oh my gosh, this guy worked for such and such presidential campaign went to Yale, and the person was a blithering idiot, had no had clearly been, been spoon-fed everything, had never had to work for it, didn't really know what they were talking about. And I'd run circles around the people, and, and sometimes you would get people, you'd get professors, professors from the Ivy League, and, and it was clear they didn't know what they were talking about. They had never actually done the work. You know, it's one thing you, you can read, like even when you go to law school, you know, law school doesn't prepare you to practice law. People are always flabbergasted when you say that they're, they're, they're stunned when you say that law school does not prepare you for the practice of law. 
law school gives you the basic fundamental understandings of the way the law works and teaches you how to research to acquire the additional knowledge. But then you got to take the bar exam to be able to, you got to take the bar prep courses really to do well in passing the bar exam. And then you go, go practice under someone. You work at a law firm and you, that's where you learn to practice law. You learn to run campaigns by running campaigns, by getting on campaigns, by volunteering, by, by working your web. That's what I did. I knew what I was talking about. And, and I always came across these people who had, had such wonderful, you and I would call them a resume. They would call them a CV. A CV is a resume for people whose heads are up their butts. And that's what they spread around in New York and Washington, the CVs. A lot of fiber. I was just always, I was always struck by that. Always feeling unconfident, overwhelmed, outmatched by someone smarter than me and going in. It's like, this guy isn't smarter than me. I might be a little smarter than him. And I, I say all of that to get back to Disney now. I've seen editors at the Daily Beast, reporters at the New York Times, and journalists from various TV news networks say, well, Disney can just quit Florida now. Disney can just move up to Georgia. You mean the state that passed the uh, abortion law you hate and the voting rights that bill you hate. They, they can move there now. That Disney, they, they just, yeah, get out of Florida, Disney. I mean, literally, I saw a Daily Beast editor say this and, and somebody from, I want to say PBS as well, from one of the news shows on PBS saying that they'll just leave Florida now. They can quit Florida. Be rid of Florida. They can't, you idiots. Disney earns over one billion with a B dollars a year from its parks in Florida. They own 26,000 acres covering 39 square miles of multiple developments. They can't leave Florida. That's the point. The Republicans would have never taken away the tax improvement district if Florida could pack up or if Disney could pack up and leave. They can't. And I'm just stunned by supposedly well-educated members of the media who clearly have never been to Disney World or they think that the castle is actually a rocket ship and can just fly away. Maybe the Star Wars attraction spaceships are real and they can just pack them up and fly them up to Georgia and buy another 26,000 acres of land under tin shell company. The whole, I'm just, I'm stunned by the number of supposedly smart people who believe that Disney can get out of Florida now, who believe Disney would abandon Florida now, who believe that Disney can abandon a more than $1 billion enterprise. Now, Disney's a multi-billion dollar company, but it produces 7 to $8 billion from its parks. And of those, over a billion comes from Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World earns Disney more money than any other one of its parks. I'm just, I am floored by the people with blue check marks. You know, I got a blue check mark on Twitter, so I'm I'm sensitive to saying that does the blue check mark make you an idiot? I mean, some people would say I am. I'm starting to wonder if I need another IQ test. The people with blue check marks who all of whom think Disney's just gonna leave Florida. No, they can't leave Florida. They are a hostage to Ron DeSantis, whether you like it or not. How do how do people think this stuff? And by the way, the people who say this they consider themselves our show, social betters. They are the cultural elite. They are the ones who who establish the, the the arts. What is popular? What is not? What are what is the zeitgeist? What what are the prevailing thoughts of the day? What is woke? What what is what is contemporary culture? It's these people who said it, which is why we're seeing the groomers and the pedophiles on the run these days, uh, taking over society because these are the the deviant people of of abnormal brain capacity who think this stuff is all fine and they think that you can literally dig up disney world and cart it up to georgia and plant it back in the ground i i'm just stunned i genuinely i am stunned that some supposedly smart editors of magazines and newspapers and news programming on television are so stupid they really think disney can get out of florida Maybe they need to go to Disney World. Maybe they've never been. But I assure you, Florida would not have done what it did if Disney could pack up and leave. They can get away with it because Disney can't go anywhere.
Yes, you can. I'll allow it. Uh, but be patient with me. Uh, I do want to take your phone calls, those of you on hold. But I, I just I, I want to spend and let this marinate with you in your minds for a moment, if you will. Boy, that's a phrase, isn't it? I, I don't have a script. Y'all would be surprised, by the way, the number of people who call the program asking for uh, the, the transcript of what I say. Well, I, I do this off the top of my head. Y'all, the, the bosses will call and they'll say, oh, you had a great monologue, that last segment. I, I don't even remember what I said. Once it is out, it is out. Out of my head. No scripts, all free form. None, but just let, 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 me, let me just spend a moment with you on this. I am deeply sympathetic to the arguments by people like my friend David French that Republicans should not behave like Democrats on this front. Uh, we should not be punishing corporations for exercising their free speech rights. We believe that uh, corporations are, under the Constitution, viewed as people. They have First Amendment rights. It's the left that's always argued that they don't. And I think you do set the same dangerous precedents the left set. When you start targeting corporations towards the left, they'll start targeting corporations towards the right. Uh, and I, I think that's a problem. And I think we should be mindful of it. And I think we set dangerous precedents. I warned the Democrats during the Trump administration, you keep rushing to court and getting federal judges to put nationwide injunctions on things Trump does that you don't like. Get ready. The conservative judges are going to start doing it. And they are. But what's the solution? Because the left has realized that it can't censor you through government. The left has realized it has lost the courts and so will lose a lot of legal fights. So the left has taken over corporations and is using corporations as an agency of the left to go after conservatives. In Georgia, Major League Baseball moved the All-Star game because Stacey Abrams told them to because the state passed the election law reform. Hollywood corporations have said, we're not going to come do business in your states anymore if you pass pro-life laws. The state of California bans state employees from traveling to eight different states that pass transgender bans or abortion uh, restrictions. What are conservatives to do? Because this is also a political fight. And the solution right now from many people who are conservatives is, well, you just got to let them do it. It's a corporation. It's not the government. But when the corporations then start forcing you to alter your behavior, you got the, the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink, says that he wants to use the power of corporations to alter people's behavior. When you have the left so viciously coming after the right in the culture front, whether in the embrace of transgenderism, pushing it on all of us, uh, or abortion rights, you name it, the right's going to start responding unless you know, there, there's a profitable, good solution. Now, look, I don't think the right should target corporations that speak up politically against them any more than I think the left should. But I also know that the left will, the left is going to, and so we're going to get into a tit for tat unless somebody offers a constructive solution for how the right should fight back in the political realm uh, when corporations are using their checkbooks and their power to advance a left-wing agenda. And I don't know that I know the answer, and no one's offered a good one. And so the solution people have come up with is fight back, use the same tactics, use the state, use power of the state to go after these corporations. And I may think there's probably a better way, but I don't know what it is. And all the people, the conservatives who are condemning what the Republicans in Florida have done, maybe offer up a compelling alternative when you think the left is coming for you and exercising disproportionate power in corporations to punish conservatives, offer a good solution, please. I'd love to know what it is. Welcome back. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. If you're in the finances of a business and need big loans, $750,000 or more, reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com. Tell them I sent you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Let's go to some phone calls. The phone number here, The Eric Erickson Show, is 877-973-7425. Let's start with Terry. Welcome to the program, Terry. Yes, uh, 
thanks, Eric, for taking my call. Um, love the show. Appreciate you. you being a reasonable voice in the wilderness, a voice of reason. Tell my wife that, um, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did want to comment on um, your comments about Disney staying silent, should have stayed silent, but they were pressured. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm flabbergasted that some of these companies that take a stance, a political stance, either way, that they don't realize no matter what they do, they're alienating 50% of their customer base. Right. Yeah, they are. Uh, and particularly in these cultural moments, uh, the left really is trying to steer more companies to take public positions that about 50 percent of the country is divided on. Uh, I thought it was very interesting back in Georgia in the political fights over the elections law and then the fetal heartbeat law that major corporations like Delta, Coca-Cola, uh, Home Depot, they spoke out on the election law and they stayed very silent on, on the uh, pro-life fetal heartbeat law because uh, uh, they, they know what will happen with the pro-life movement if they take it. But Hollywood, of course, doesn't care. It's harder and harder for corporations, I think, to thread the needle these days because so many of their... Uh, human resources departments and uh, a lot of their vocal employees are progressive. Now, keep in mind here, in the transgender movement as well, we're dealing with less than 1% of the population. With a hardcore, what I would call woke progressives, we're dealing with maybe 5 to 10% of the population. But they are extremely online, extremely active, extremely vocal, extremely loud. So they disproportionately appear to be a majority. In fact, one of the big problems with, for example, Twitter is that it is so disproportionately dominated by progressive wokes. It seems like everybody must agree with them. And the Democrats have been running afoul of the situation in large part because they are so hyper online. They are so hyper focused on the wokes. And the reality is that the wokes really are a disproportionately small group of Americans, which is why so many actual voters are moving to the GOP right now. Back to the phones. Chris, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show, Chris. Hey, Eric. Pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. I uh, I am an ex-Disney employee, actually. Worked for them for 11 years with ESPN. And I watched Bob Iger masterfully build that company, but the wokeness crept in to such a degree, it, it became untenable um, and really a bit of a cancer. But I, I called to quote a movie line. I don't know if you've seen the movie War Games. Yes. With Matthew Broderick. Oh, yes. At the end of that Would movie. Would you like to play another game? At the end of that movie, the machine says, interesting game, this thermonuclear war. The only way to win is not to play. Uh, yeah, and 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 it's it's uh, it, it, to me it's it's perfect for corporations. What are you doing? Just don't play. You can't win, right. no matter what side you take. In this case, Disney, a family company, has taken, in my judgment, the completely wrong side. But needless to say, don't take a side. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it really is. The only way to to win the game is to not play the game, and the left wants them to play. And what we're finding is uh, there is more disproportionate power on the right these days than the right knew it had. Because it, this, this goes back to the Twitter phenomenon. One of the problems with being always on social media always on Twitter in particular, and a lot of reporters are always on Twitter. And the reason they're always on Twitter is because other reporters uh, and fans and readers are on Twitter. And so they feel like they're having an impact because so many people are on Twitter. They feel like they're interacting, they're learning stuff, they're seeing people uh, engage with them and their content, so they must be relevant. It makes people feel relevant. It makes you feel like a big deal when you're getting lots of retweets on stuff. What you find in the real-world metrics, though, is one, overwhelmingly, Americans aren't on there. Maybe 1% to 2% of the population. 25% of the population has an account 1% to 2% really engaged. No one clicks through. They're reading the tweets. They're not clicking through. Uh, so it, it really, if you're always on Twitter and you think everyone else is, you really come away with a skewed view of America. And so many of the wokes are on Twitter 
and have such a skewed view of America, they really feel like they are disproportionately in power. And that has emboldened them because crazy can unite with crazy on social media and all the crazy gets together and says, we are the majority when they're not. But because all the other business leaders, they're on social media too. Oh my gosh, they must be the majority. We need to act. They want us to act. Let's act. And so they act. Then it turns out the majority actually is not on Twitter. And surprise, surprise, the majority recognizes crazy is crazy. It has a backlash. The only way to win the game is to not play the game. And I hope, I expect, I would presume that more and more of the left, hopefully, is, or at least of the corporations, not of the left, the corporations that have gone to the left are starting to realize that, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, we need to stay out of this. And that's why, uh, while I don't think, I, I think it was spiking the football. Getting rid of the tax improvement district was spiking the football. And I think there could be, voters could over time, I don't think they're going to reject Ron DeSantis for this, but I think it'll leave a bad taste in voters' mouths. At the same time, I don't care because if it can dissuade any other corporation, Delta, Disney, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Pepsi, General Motors, any of them, Apple, dissuade them from engaging for the left and trying to go after conservatives, I, I think deterrence is a good thing. Back to the phones. Alex, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me on, Eric. Sure. Um. Yeah, you brought up some excellent points with um, how the left carries themselves um, and just how crazy things have gotten. And they've been that way for a very, very long time. Um, back in 2015, back when um, the most evil being in the world decided he was going to run for president, that's when they exploded. But this is what we're seeing now is the end of a decade long process of change. And it's made a lot of people afraid and it's made a lot of corporations afraid because at the end of the day, corporations are just a group of people. So they are allowed their freedom of speech. But what ends up happening is when they decide to side and voice speech that favors one minority of their employees, as you've stated, over a greater majority of conservative employees, because you have the conservatives that are likely making up a lot more of the employees that work in Florida, but you also can't overlook the people who work in the California parts. Right. There are a lot more conservatives in California than people give credit for. Right. And when you have companies deciding to take these stands and they're being punished for it by the government, the left has not cared about using the government or any measure of control to punish people that they disagree with. So unfortunately, it's a case of they only see strength. So, yeah. And they only respond to strength. So you have to use that in kind if you want to have any kind of pragmatic victory in what people are calling this culture war. Yeah, look, I, I think that makes some sense. If if the right now stands up and, and can deter future corporate engagement on behalf of the left by going after Disney, then, yeah, I, I think it's kind of at this point the cost of doing business. Unless someone who thinks it was a bad idea can provide me a good alternative that keeps corporations from chronically siding with the left and threatening boycotts of states, pulling business from states, and otherwise uh, badgering and bullying states with their financial clout, I 1,000% um, think that deterrence is the best option, and this is deterrence. Now, all that being said, uh, one of the things that I also do think is I'm not opposed to all tax improvement districts 
I mean, the, the Reedy Creek Tax Improvement District for Disney back in the 1960s, I think objectively was worth giving them because it allowed them to experiment without having to worry about extra regulatory costs that would have potentially made the project unfeasible from construction to environmental to health uh, to occupational and worker safety stuff from the state of Florida. I think it was worth doing, but I don't think any of these things are, are worth keeping in perpetuity. Same with the copyright. Why does Disney get to keep perpetuating the copyright of Mickey Mouse? Because under copyright law, eventually it goes into the public domain. If you or I put something out there, we don't have the clout to keep it out of the public domain. Why should Disney, just because it's a corporation with a lot of lobbyists and money? And I, again, I, I think a lot of these things, uh, you, we got to deal with deterrence. And it, you, you got to show these companies that, you know, we are over time, we're going to allow these things to, we're not going to have your back. We're going to allow the private sector, the free market to have its way. We're, we're going to stop subsidizing you, stop protecting you. And, and and stop giving you latitude, and we're going to stop listening to your lobbyists. It, there's got to be some level of deterrence. Because again and again and again, what do we see in Georgia? Major League Baseball pulled out of the state because Stacey Abrams told them to. That, that, remember, she told them they should boycott and then edited her USA Today editorial to say she didn't really want them to boycott. Uh, when people started pointing out she was encouraging them to leave the state of Georgia. Uh, USA Today gave her a pass to go back in and say, I don't really believe this. Don't really want them to do this, but she did originally. And the, the original construction of her paragraph uh, said, said they had the right to do it. Then, uh, so Major League Baseball. Then you have uh, Hollywood film industries, including Disney, telling Georgia if your fetal heartbeat law goes into into um, practice or goes into effect, we're going to pull our business out of Georgia. The voting education or voting rights law. Disney, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta, uh, a bunch of major corporations bullying the state on behalf of Democrats, on behalf of partisans on the left, uh, telling them not to do these things. And the state ignored them, by the way. The, the state of Georgia absolutely gave the middle finger to these corporations in both cases. But the state of Georgia will not pass a Religious Freedom Restoration Act. The state of Georgia is one of a handful of states that do not have that law in the books. Even California has that law. But corporations and the Chamber of Commerce have routinely opposed it in Georgia. And the Georgia Republicans have routinely folded and caved to the businesses. And the businesses, it's their, their woke employees who are opposed to religious freedom. Maybe the Georgia Republicans, after they get through this election cycle, will stand up and finally give us a Religious Freedom Restoration Act as well. The phone number here, 877-973-7425. When we come back, the Mark Meadows story. We've got to talk about Mark Meadows and, and what the Washington Post is blowing up. But before we get there, let's talk about the, the stink of the story of Kevin McCarthy and, and his hidden records or his his uh, audio that has come out. He, you know what Kevin McCarthy needs? He needs an Eden Pure Thunderstorm in his office to get rid of the stench in his office. Of course, he'd have to get rid of himself, too, to get rid of the stench. But the Eden Pure could probably help some. You can get three of them for less than $200 right now by going to EdenPureDeals.com. On the front page of the site, you'll be greeted with the promo code box, and you put in ERIC3, E-R-I-C-K-3. You will get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for less than $200. That's saving you $200, and you get free shipping. They are air purifiers. They clean the air. They don't mask odors. That's important. A lot of these things, a lot of people with essential oils, they mask the odor, but the odor's still there. It's just there's another odor competing with it. With the Eden Pure Thunderstorm, it eliminates the odor and also gets rid of the mildew, the mold, the bacteria, the pollen, and it's filterless. You just wipe it out. You can get three of them for less than $200. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC3. The phone number is 877-973-7425, should you wish to be on this year program. Uh, glad to have you with me today, and we'll go a little loose on calls. Uh, we've been kind of, I've had so much to say this week, we've been been a little tight. I, I want to talk about this Kevin McCarthy story. Kevin McCarthy is the Republican leader in the House of Representatives. I am not a Kevin McCarthy fan. I think Kevin McCarthy uh, is spineless and principleless. He is covetous of power. 
Uh, I don't particularly care for him. In 2016, he was caught on an undercover recording, and now he's been caught again. His office vigorously denied that Kevin McCarthy was going to call for Donald Trump to resign. They vigorously denied Kevin McCarthy attacking Donald Trump. And then uh, New York Times reporter Jonathan Martin released the audio. It is Kevin McCarthy. This is from the Washington Post. Former President Donald Trump and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy spoke on the phone Thursday night about a newly released audio of McCarthy telling Republican leaders Trump should resign in the wake of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The audio contradicted McCarthy's claim that he didn't push for Trump to resign after the deadly insurrection by a pro-Trump mob. On Friday, more audio clips surfaced in which McCarthy says, I've had it with this guy and blamed Trump for the storming of the Capitol. Trump was not upset about McCarthy's remarks and was glad the Republican leader didn't follow through, which Trump saw as a sign of his continued grip on the GOP, according to the two people who spoke on conditions of anonymity. But House Republicans are waiting for a firm statement from Trump, according to multiple GOP aides, on how to determine whether they should still back McCarthy as their leader and a potential speaker. I don't trust Kevin McCarthy. I think Kevin McCarthy sticks his finger in the wind to see which way the wind blows to decide uh, which position he's going to take. Um, I do not think he is fit to be Speaker of the House of Representatives. Uh, he is not a leader. He's a follower of trends and rushes to get in front of them as best he can. Um, I, 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 he gets what he deserves by doing this. Kevin McCarthy denies saying what he's then caught in an audio tape saying. You can't trust the guy. Conservatives should not trust this guy. He's not one of you. He does lack, he lacks your convictions. He lacks your principles. He plays all sides for the preservation of his own power. He's no better than a progressive. And frankly, I don't think Republicans should put into the speaker's chair anyone from California to begin with. And yet, Republicans probably will because there isn't a competing alternative uh, that can capture their hearts and minds, and that's a problem too. Y'all, I I think if the Republicans get Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, uh, they will get what they deserve from the voters for doing so. You're you're warned. I'm on record. I'm not a fan. Uh, No conservative I know has ever trusted Kevin McCarthy. And they're not going to start now. And this audio tape is just another reason why you should not. He's duplicitous, rudderless, principleless. The only thing Kevin McCarthy has a conviction in is his use of power. And those are the sorts of people you should never give power to. Now, when we come back, we'll deal with the Mark Meadows situation. And Barack Obama now suddenly championing the cause against disinformation, which I find hysterical. My gosh, the thigh sweats have returned to members of the media over Barack Obama pursuing uh, disinformation and going after it. Uh, Goodness gracious. I want to talk about that. It plays perfectly right into the story of Mark Meadows being registered to vote in three different states while a congressman. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details.